Hello, this is Enjima. In this video I will show you some of the main features of TypeSKF, namely the, the features that are fronted on the TypeSKF.com website. I will show you syntax highlighting, how to select a theme and that you can customize the syntax highlighting and how you do that. I will show you how the syntax checking works and uh, I will also show you some basic examples of the auto completion. Then there are two features that I will only mention in this video and I will demo it for you in in the later videos and that is the CPAC service and it's the SQX that enables subject oriented code. So for the first part syntax highlighting we open the editor we go to file, we open the mission. Uh, the difference between these two is that the open project assumes that there is a .tproy file so that you have used TypeSKF to create a project earlier. The .tproy is a TypeSKF project file. Uh, and if you don't have that because you might have downloaded or want to open, open someone else's mission that is created in some other environment, you can take open mission and you select, you go to the, the mission that you want to open and you select the mission.sqm that should be present in all uh, missions and you open that and what will happen is that is that all the files that are code files are open and a .tpry file is created uh, and, and all the files are open in the file explorer <coughs> then we can uh, let's take well build the start building a start boss in uh, escape channels we used this code and for the syntax highlighting part here we can see that uh, the comments are green uh, local variables are yellow and uh, yeah, texts are purple and so on. And uh, <coughs> all these colors are defined in an XML file and you can actually change these files. If you go to, oh, I can also show you that in the options you have two themes, the default light theme that is a light theme and the dark theme that is the dark theme and these themes are customizable so if you select edit here you come to this directory where the themes are defined so if you want to do uh, to change someone some of them you can just do that in here so you can see the comments here use this four color it's not bold but it's italic and here's just an example of uh, what you what you change when you change this this definition and um, brackets is uh, this color it's bold and it's not italic so just play around with that and uh, and uh, if you create a new theme and put it here I can also show you that we can call it my new theme uh, then we go back to the editor and we can see that we have the my new theme in case we want to create a new theme and we don't want to change the default ones. Um, I think that's all about syntax highlighting. We can now move on to syntax checking and the syntax checking down here uh, in the bottom of the screen you get the uh, compiler errors or, or what you call them, the, the analyzer errors. So for example we select the highcheck.sqf here and uh, we can see that if we just write anything here we get an error here, a syntax error and uh, TypeSQF tries best it can to, to uh, show what what went wrong and this is a syntax error it's just well blah 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 
but for example, we can remove this exit with here, and we can see that the analyzer complains that there should be a then or an exit with here. This will exit with. This will save you a lot of work uh, to have the errors shown here instead of uh, during runtime in Arma 3. For the third part, which is auto completion, we already saw a small example of that. Let's let's uh, just copy one line here. Uh, so we write this one: D R N var escape extraction. As you see, you get all the the possible. Um, in this case, global variables in uh, in here, so that will make it a little easier to write. You also get the get marker pass. You see, you get all the all the script commands, and for the for the case of the script commands, you also get uh, the syntax, just how you should. Oops. Uh, what, what the script command expects in terms of, uh, of um, arguments. So here you can see that it returns a position that is an array and uh, uh, the get marker pos takes one post argument that is the marker name and the marker name is a string we can see here. So basically that's all about all the completion uh, for type SQF in type SQX, you have a little more smart auto completion that also uh, gets the members of clauses and, and stuff that are contextual. Um, okay, I think that was it for, for this video. And for the next video, I will show you the CPAC service. And just a few words on that is that it's worth checking out because that's a very nice feature to uh, to version your scripts and to keep them available so that you can reuse them in different missions and by you doing that you also share them so that anyone can can use them and the sqx is an approach that i'm very glad to present uh, i think it's in the beta state right now but I think very soon it will be, be uh, worth using uh, if you like object oriented design and uh, well that, that, that's a lot to say about that but if you're just curious and want to get started you can go to the, the typescf site typescf.com and go to the sqx api reference here and uh, everything that is new so sqx stands for extended sqf and uh, that means that it is sqf bas basically but but you also have type handling and some more features and everything that is new and not in sqf uh, you can see on this page so um, here for example is is the class you, you and this is how you use it and here are some working examples on the right. Okay, thanks for now. See you in another video.